This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Hello, this is Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com. This week, we are sponsored by the Friends of the Magic Word, and we've got a uh, new person who has joined us, and I want to welcome Jeff Lefton. Thank you very much, Jeff, for your donation on PayPal, and thanks also for all of the help you gave me when I was at the senior tour there in St. Louis recently for the close-up convention, which I understand, I think they're going to make you change their name to the Gateway Close-Up Convention, at my suggestion. Anyhow, it was uh, great meeting you and spending some time and also getting a chance to visit your Abra Kid Abra which will be the focus of an upcoming episode. I'll just kind of give you guys a sneak preview for something coming up uh, sometime soon here in The Magic Word. And I also want to thank Christopher Gartner for your recurring donation, and we appreciate that. Sometimes we have people who give us monthly pledges and others who will give us donations whenever we happen to see each other at a magic convention, just handing me some cash. And other times I get just some donations that are ongoing from time to time on an occasional basis through pay. PayPal. Any way and any time that you can donate or pledge in any way is greatly helpful in order to keep this podcast going. As you know, we just recently completed 750, and we blew past that with the next few convention reports that we posted. And today will be one more special episode, but next week I'll give you a little sneak preview. We're going to be going to another convention in which we'll be uh, updating you with some daily reports from the Collector's Expo in Cleveland. And after that, I'll be heading yet to another convention. Very short thereafter that's going to be the pebble palooza and so a lot of stuff going on and those kinds of things because i can afford to attend because of the friends like you who help to support this podcast with your financial pledges and donations so thank you thank you thank you everyone and for those of you who can't do that and don't find yourself in a position to help us financially you can always help us if you buy anything through amazon i want to remind you to go to the bottom of any of the pages on the web magic board podcast.com and on the bottom of the page. There should be a graphic that says we are an affiliate of Amazon. If you click on that, it'll take you to Amazon. So anything you purchase, we'll get a few pennies back on some of your purchases through the affiliate program with Amazon. Well, this week, when we were talking with Artem Shukin from Russia, RTM was a, a one of the guests and performers, lecturers, and talent and on the bill there at the Winter Carnival in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, recently. And so we had a chance to sit down and chat with him. He is a world champion, and I thought it would be interesting to talk with him about what it's like behind, well, kind of a mysterious country in a way. It's not as mysterious, let's say, as North Korea for sure, but certainly in Russia, many for many years, we had, when the Cold War was going on, there was a thing called the Iron Curtain, and that disappeared whenever the wall came down back in uh, late 80s, early 90s, and as a result, there has been more collaboration among all of our countries, but still, it's a, it's, it gives us, a, there still is a little bit of mystery, I guess, behind the invisible curtain there in Russia. I was always curious to know more about, do they have restaurant magicians? Do they have birthday party magicians? Are there brick and mortar magic shops? How do you become a magician? Uh, most of the books that are written are in English, and so do they teach English in schools and encourage people to buy books in English and to learn magic, or in, uh, also so is it something that is a respected profession, that is, to be a magician or not? These and many more questions actually are things that RTM answers on this week's episode. I'm not going to spoil it for you because there are a lot of interesting things that we discuss here this week. At least they were for me, and I hope they are for you. This is a little bit different uh, podcast because of the line of questions and where we go uh, with this. And I talk fairly quickly, I know. And he was trying to understand and interpret in his mind from English to Russian and then back to English so he could speak to me. So uh, from time to time, I know I spoke a little bit too fast. And so I appreciate the fact that he was able to catch me for most of the time and understand (laughs) what I was trying to ask. So I'm going to step out of the way and introduce this week's guest, who I'm sure you're going to love. Please welcome my guest this week, Mr. Artyom Shukin, here on The Magic Word. (laughs) 
Today we are going to go not only just across the pond, but across, golly, almost around the world <laughs> to the other side from the from the U.S. to the other side of the world. And we're going to speak with someone who is a not just a FISA winner, he is an international winner of, gosh, I don't know how many contests, he'll tell us. But I was at the IBM whenever he had taken the gold. In fact, I was a judge uh, then in the contest, so <laughs> I thought he was just phenomenal and uh, glad that we could uh, award him as such and uh, keep, get him on his way to FISM where he did very well and won there. He has been performing and he's just one of the, the hottest performers that's out there now. If you have not got him for your convention, you should try to get him when he's available because he's in America then right now. And so, well, let's just get into it. <laughs> I want to welcome my friend, Mr. Artem Shukin. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so, glad to be with you. Thank you. I'm glad that you are here then also. And I know that I've butchered your name, but that, is that about right, Artem or Artem or what is well, it's, uh, it's easy to pronounce Artem, but originally it sounds Artyom. Art- Artyom. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about the last name? Shukin. Shukin. Yeah, that Shukin. sounds great. Got it. Okay, well, I do have it. Okay, well, that's not as bad as I thought that it was. It is a, a little bit different, a name that is not on the lips of everybody then right now, but uh, as you have been winning the contest, you have certainly been becoming more and more well-known. And before we get too far, you, know, you are from Russia originally then, right? Originally, yes. Right. And so, just to get all the politics out of the way, so he is from Russia, we're not here to talk about politics because magic transcends politics, and so that's what we're here to talk about here then today. Now, did you study magic in Russia uh, along with others as part of a class, or, I mean, I know like in China when they learn ballet or whatever, they will spend all day long learning. In Russia, do they have magic classes, or how did you actually... This just fascinates me about how you might have gotten involved with magic. Well, in my case, uh, I was born in an artistic family. And okay. my parents, they are uh, artists and they are magicians. And uh, they run a magic theater for mm-hmm. 35 years. It's a repertoire theater with 22 family magic shows. And uh, they play the shows uh, mostly every week, five times uh, a week, so for 35 years. So I was happy to born in this family, and when I was a small child, I was spending all the time backstage. Mm-hmm. I was working as a lighting director, sound director when I was very young, when my parents just opened the theater. Yes. They don't have opportunity to invite professionals. And the story of the theater, mostly it uh, starts from uh, United States, because my mm. father, um, he was traveling, uh, he was a drama artist, but then he won a program uh, of the government of United States, it's called Business for Russia. Okay. And he became one of 11 persons who was invited to United States to discover the, the field they was interested in. And so you had an artistic visa, basically. A visa as an artist to come over to work here? Uh, uh, for me? No, no, for, for your for father. father. No, it was a special government program. Oh, program. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, it's, now yeah. so it's just 11 persons. Okay. So mm-hmm. they uh, bring this 11 person that was living in the United States in mm-hmm. the families. And it was a region uh, like Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my father learned magic as a business. And he worked in a magic shop of Tom Frank. Mm-hmm. And the um, government organized a meeting with David Copperfield. So when he came back to, to Russia, it was not, uh, it was maybe two years after the Soviet Union crashed. So he had a lot of uh, information from the United States. And uh, the per- repertoire of the theater is based on the books of David Gein. Mm-hmm. And this time, and so it's. I think it's it's kind of a big wave of information, and that's why I think the theater became very successful in Russia, and this is the most popular now theater in uh, Saratov City, where wow. it's based. So, and uh, and me as uh, I think I'm also start doing magic because of uh, United States, because my father brings kind of uh, videotapes. Yes. Where I can see like uh, magicians doing something totally different that I never saw before. Right. Yeah. So that's 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 this small story how the. So you didn't have a lot of magicians 
to to mentor you or to teach you in Russia? No, it's 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 difficult because you know during the Soviet Union, uh, yeah, there was some great uh, magicians, uh, like mostly circus magicians, as okay. you know, for maybe a family name Kio. Okay. And uh, his two sons, so they are doing mostly big illusions in the circus. But it's it was I think there is no enough information in Soviet Union because it was so closed country yes. and to get something new it's it was unbelievable. I'm sure that there, there was a way how to learn from different magicians, but in Saratov city where we was based, there was. Not too much, maybe two persons. Probably. Just to try to get uh, perspective of where Sarato City is, where is that in relation to Moscow? North, south, east, west? It's more on the south. Okay, about it's how like, far from Moscow? Well, it's uh, 800 uh, kilo- kilometers mm-hmm. yeah, from Moscow. It's ways away, okay. So it's not really in a cold tundra, it's someplace that's warmer climate. Yeah, it's wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> as I know from my parents, this uh, wind it's minus twenty five degrees. So minus twenty. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Okay, that's yeah, Fahrenheit, south. not Celsius. Yeah, south. Okay. <laughs> that's the south of Russia. Yes. Yeah, yeah nice and uh, balmy down there. So uh, I was just thinking when you had mentioned Dave again and your father bringing back books, is that a way also that you learned English since all these books were written in English? Well, uh, no, for me it was a different way to learn English and to discover this, uh, the, the history of country. Uh, because for the first education, my father is an English teacher. Oh. And when I was uh, younger, so he pushed me every day like to learn uh, English, to learn 20 minutes. With, I was crying, no, mom, I don't <laughs> want, but <laughs> my father always asked him, you need to do it. It's like trying to teach a kid, tell a kid to teach, learn the piano. No, yeah. I don't want to learn yes, the piano. Yes, 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 <laughs> same, same way, yeah. And now I'm very thankful to him because I have opportunity yeah. to, to be in the United States, to talk with people, to understand, so it's a great. Right. Yeah. Uh, so when he brought the, those books over, you were able to read those or because he was an English teacher, he helped you to read, I guess. Well, mostly, uh, mostly how I learned. Uh, so, uh, you know, at that time, there was, yeah, magic dealers. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I forget, the big catalog. Well, it was Tannen's catalog, and it was... Uh, yeah, Tannen's catalog was big. And also a big, a big uh, catalog. Would it Abbott's uh, have it? No, it's... Uh, I forget. Maybe I will catch my mind later. So, usually my father write a letter, the text with the order, so what we will order, oh. and he give me this paper, and uh-huh. I was typing in a computer and then sending a fax. So, this is the way also I, I think I learned so mm-hmm. a lot. So And then later, yeah, I, I realized that there is a lot of interesting books in uh, the library of my uh, father and in English. But mostly it was uh, always mixing theater with mentalism and theater. So because my father is a theater directing. Yeah, guess. So yes, I that's it. why mm, all their shows, it's, uh, it's, not just a, it's not just a tricks. It's, a kind, it's not a drama play, but it's their, they make it like a, tricks like a theater. So and I, I like it. It's more deep for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rather than just perform the uh, pick a card, mm-hmm. so that's why in uh, in his library a lot of interesting books uh, in English and yeah, that's it would teach covering you the theatrical part of that. Yeah, I, I think mostly from my parents I learned the artistic way, how to be an artist on stage, because my father was not a, a person. Um, during the time who can uh, teach me the techniques like back palm, tenkai palm, right. perfect art production and coins and linking rings. He was an uh, artist. And for me, it's, nowadays, I feel it's more important uh, to be interesting person and to be on stage without anything and be interesting for the humans, for the people, yes. for one, two hours. So just like... Telling the stories and yeah, I think it's yeah, it's it's a great. It's, you need to have a great talent. And I know what you're saying because in watching your act in just you dressed in black and with a shaped head and white on black basically and using a white billiard ball, it is simple in so far as the props that you're using and yet can be seen 
from a 3,000 seat theater and your reactions, your smile, your head, your movements and everything can be seen by everybody. It, that's the theatrical part of all of that. So it's not so much the method as it is the presentation that everyone is able to see. So I can definitely see that theatrical influence that your father had then on you. Yeah, father and my mom. My mom, she's a great actress. So every okay. time we discuss uh, uh, with her, yeah. Who is the character and all these deep moments? So try to split. Yeah. Did you work with that both your mom and dad as far yeah, as your too. act goes? Yeah, 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 that? yeah. Of course, yeah. Because the, during that time, I was blocked in South Korea. Uh -huh. I was traveling to South Korea, and uh, by uh, by the accident, I stayed there for eight months because it uh, was a first COVID wave. Oh, okay. And I yep. just arrived. Couldn't, couldn't uh, get back out. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I couldn't. So, and that was the time I was always in communication because I sent videos. What do you think? And then that's the act how it start and developed and we discuss a lot just why it happens and you mean like on zoom meetings or uh, via internet you yeah mean? yeah mm -hmm. that's right that's right yeah so it was really during the two years of lockdown during covid that you developed this act yeah that's right because uh, you know i i started traveling to south korea in 2017 first time and i feel I start doing magic because of uh, manipulation. I feel yes. that sleight of hand, it's something that I would like to do. Mm -hmm. It's my passion. And I saw Marco Tendo, oh, and, boy, uh, yeah. Shimada, and uh, I saw later Raymond Crow from Australia, Australia with right. uh, his tango of eight balls. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lance Burton, of course. So I was a fan of these uh, magicians. And that's why I start doing manipulation. And later I realize, so it's not my knowledge in a classic manipulation is not enough. Mm -hmm. So that's why I uh, start traveling to South Korea and I met uh, Lucas Lee. He's a two times uh, winner in manipulation in 2015, 2000, 18? Uh, 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 2015 and 2012 Blackpool. Okay, before that. Yeah. He, uh, he take second prize, but uh, I feel he's um, he's a great teacher in uh, in manipulation. Uh -huh. So I was happy to meet him, and maybe I have a connection personally with him. Good mm -hmm. that I understand what he is explaining to me, and I was really glad to know the philosophy of Korean manipulation. So what they are thinking. So it's a totally different Asian mentality. Right, right. Yes. So and that's why I was traveling just for one month to South Korea as usually. So mm -hmm. I find this uh, time in my life. And uh, f the wave of COVID coming, and uh, it was a time to make decisions. Should I come back to my country? Because it was like the last emergency flight. Right. Because I start closing. All or the stay traffic. here. Yeah, or stay here. I don't know how long. And I and cannot imagine that. Uh, I, I was thinking, okay, kind of virus, something happens, but maybe in the next month uh, everything will be finished. We hope so. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then it was, I realized, like, eight months, eight months, <laughs> and my life totally changed the way how I was living, because I need to somewhere uh, to to pay for my life, to hotel, to... Did you start uh, learning Korean? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so English was a common language that you and... Uh, yeah, English Lee is okay. everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's more difficult in France with English, but, uh, yeah. In Korea, it's okay. Everyone speaks English. So I was happy because the uh, Korean family gave me opportunity to go to the, uh, to the academy. It's called Moon and Tree. The Lucas is uh, owner of this uh, magic academy. And, uh, oh, academy. Sorry, academy. Oh, okay. sorry. Sorry yeah. for my pronunciation. <laughs> no, no. Academy. And he's also a professor in uh, college mm -hmm. uh, in um, South Korea. And it's educational, professional education for magicians. So, but I attend uh, professional courses. So, yeah, and it's it was it was great. And that time, Lucas told me, Artyom, why you have a lot of time, so you can use our space, our rooms, just to rehearse, mm -hmm. to maybe build your act. Right. And um, I have a top hat. I have a ball, mm -hmm. and he take a white paper. He take a scissors. He cut. A white dot. Out of the paper, yeah. Yeah, and you, you have everything to start. Wow. Free objects. Yeah. And during my lecture, I will talk about 
about the mini- minimalism. Minimalism. That, mm-hmm. that you can concentrate deeply on just two, maximum three objects. And I start. And I start to f- try to find different effects and then sequences and then combining into the parts of the act and then music and mm-hmm. then try to find my personality and movements, choreography right. and logics and the reasons of every movement. And so it was a, it was a very deep process. And uh, yeah, but it's interesting that even during this process, when I was some part success, some not, I was calling to my parents and they say, I'm spending like almost four months to create this one. I have something, but... I am sure I will never use it. Mm. I remember this phrase I'm telling to my mom. I will never use it. And she told me, no, oh, come down, come down. Don't worry. It yeah. just need time to, it's, everything will be okay. But I was sure that no. And later I cannot imagine that this act will help me. Not only, it will, I, in some way it will change my life. Because... Mm-hmm. It allows me to be out of my country and right. live and uh, traveling all around the world and mm-hmm. meet, meet so many people. A lot of people that mm-hmm. even I cannot imagine that I will have opportunity to talk and to meet. Right. Yeah. So now in developing the act, I'm always curious. Uh, was it developed a for for contests or did you develop it b to for for the theater to to actually perform someplace? No. What no, was your What no. was your thought? No, you know, I heard that uh, Marco Carvo. I'm mm. I'm sure you know this name, and uh, he created his bird act, especially for Lido in Paris. Uh-huh. So he was exactly know what he would because he knows how much time he has. He has to develop a show for that time for, for the, twelve yeah, minutes or whatever. Yeah, it is, that's yeah. right. For me, no, I was just in the process. Mm. I'm not the guy who is um, who have. Um, uh, like exactly like artistic vision, what I will do, what kind of music I will use. I will do now the show for the stage and uh, this is, will be the image. No, I feel like I'm more maybe uh, kind of idiot in this process. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me, <laughs> no, no, it's really, it takes me a lot of time and uh, no, I think I was just, I need to do something and let's, just jump in the creativity process sure, and see where it goes. Yeah, and uh, I feel like yeah, I feel like that's I don't have ability to create. That mm-hmm. was the feeling. Wow. I, yeah, I, so and yet I, we see you as being very creative, and you don't see yourself as that way. Yeah, I was huh. I was feeling no, I was <laughs> I made it. I can because a lot of uh, days I remember when I coming back to my small room where I was living in South Korea, and I was like almost crying. Because I didn't, during like all the day, being one in a room, I didn't create anything. And I feel like, no, I can, I, I don't have this ability. I don't have this ability. I'm just like, maybe I can perform if someone teach me. You felt like you had to be productive every day. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. yeah but, you know, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Right, so, it some days I was so happy, like, a, like jumping like a kid, uh, <laughs> yeah, show to my Korean friends, uh-huh. oh, look what I create now. Yeah. And they was happy, so, and I was happy. But after, like, one week of nothing, and, yeah, process of creativity, it's, like, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. So people should not be discouraged if they are really trying hard to create something and nothing comes and they don't you shouldn't feel like you are a uh, you're not a success because you didn't come up with something you might tomorrow or the next week or you might have something in your dream that night so yeah that's right don't get discouraged that's, basically that's what right. i hear you saying yeah that's right there's no exactly the rules how to do it so you just i feel as uh, you just need to be in process as long as you can so mm-hmm. without breaks and covid gives me a lot of opportunity <laughs> right. you know yeah uh, so i just concentrate i was working seven months without any stop without right. day off and some days when i wow. feel i feel no energy sleep not good so it's not a time for creation i just take a cards and i just practice just practice 12 hours a day just sure. two free moves that i need feel that i need to be just perfect mm-hmm. and today the day of just like training like a robot mm-hmm. nothing more Mm, and but some days it was like I was feeling oh I want to play something I want to cut I want to create so yeah. that's, uh, 
Well, during that time of uh, COVID, there, uh, I was talking with someone who had said there's going to be some body or bodies who are going to be coming out of this with something we've never seen before and something amazing and creative because we have nothing but time to work on things. And not just from magic, but there, uh, I was expecting maybe a cure for cancer. I mean, there are people who are not doing anything else but just focused on this. They don't have a lot of phone calls coming in or not having to be traveling uh, as far as commuting to and from work. You know, you can deal with your family and whatever else the point is I really thought there would be a lot more inventions and creativity that would have developed during that two years of lockdown so at least I'm glad that there was something that we got out of for our art for magic that we had in you because you were down there with your head down for two years working hard every day trying to come up with some kind of a new idea so congratulations on that that's great and we thank you very much for that's a beautiful act Thank so so in developing that, then also, I assume, as we were saying, you kind of just threw everything in there. So I'm assuming also this was a longer act that you then trimmed down in order to fit to the time guidelines for contests. Okay, say again, because I, I lost uh, yes. almost everything. No, no, yeah. that's okay. Uh, so what I was saying is you probably had a long, longer act that you had to trim down to make shorter to perform for contests. Is that right? Or was it... Well, um... In creativity process, I have a lot of uh, interesting effects, sequences that I uh, that I mm, didn't use in my act mm -hmm. when I was composing. And to be honestly, I was um, I was around five minutes for the uh, my first version. It was something like four minutes and. Uh, maybe 30 seconds, and mm -hmm. it was not enough for the FISM. But during that time, I was not imagining that I will go to the FISM. Oh, that wasn't in your mind? No, okay. at all, mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So I was competing at national championship in uh, Korea after okay. four months of uh, creating this act, and I was lucky to become the first foreigner in uh, the history of this national convention, Alexander Magic uh, Convention, the to first be the first outside foreign, of yeah, South outside Korea? who wow. take the first prize. Because the Asians are amazing with yeah, their creativity the, and their dexterity, their uh, the, the card manipulation. That's yeah, what they're known that's for. that's right. And only after. I have opportunity to go to the FISM Europe hmm. half year, and there was, there was a sport, and uh, they say, why, why not to compete? Yeah. So, and I say, okay, now I will prepare myself. And the um, timing of my act was exactly like five minutes, 10 or maybe 15 mm -hmm. seconds, something around like this. I feel in my case, it's, uh, it's enough because well, uh, it's great maybe for commercial use to have an mm -hmm. act 10 minutes and 9 minutes, and but I feel for the audience um, attention, it's it's great just to have maybe 5, 6 minutes. Right. But depends on what you're doing. And I, I try to, every second of my act, I try to, to, to add effect so it feel like... Uh, like full compact, so yeah, every a full single, show. Yeah, full show yeah, in this it has small. an arc from the beginning to end. It has a satisfying ending and a good opening, so it feels like a full act. Yeah, so I, I was lucky, but I'm sure, yeah, I can do it like more, put something add, but mm -hmm. I don't feel I need to do it. No, I think yeah. it's nice and tight. And so it's what now, five minutes, or how long is your act? Oh, for ever, around five minutes and half. What is the timing for FISM? What's uh, for five minutes? It's oh, they're minimum five it, minutes. Okay, minimum five minutes. Minimum five minutes. Okay, so you're per, you're just right on it, or a little over then. Okay. I think everything in my act is minimalistic. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the timing is also <laughs> time. <laughs> well, is that what your lecture is about, as far as uh, being minimalistic and? Well, I I think I I was happy to present my lecture during Blackpool, and I uh -huh. have a lot of. Uh, response from the people that they really like it i'm going i, I perform a lot i'm uh, sharing uh, all my ideas that i create in a half year mm -hmm. i'm just not keeping anything in my pocket and i show what we can do it's not uh, only about manipulation okay i give uh, the tricks that uh, people can use on stage anywhere and oh. with, uh, normal objects like luggage cart that mm -hmm. uh, luggage we use uh, this case with us everywhere but no mm -hmm. one use it in a real life mm -hmm. so and i will perform with this one i will uh, present two of my new products 
also for magicians that I feel very creative and interesting. And uh, I'm going into the way how I build my act. It's not exactly the rules uh, that mm -hmm. you you need steps that you need to follow, but this is what helps me during uh, staying in Korea. And I give exactly the way how I start, how I finish, what the problems, and I will show different videos from South Korea, the process of uh, rehearsing. Oh, okay. wow. So I'm going very deep in uh, one hour. So mm -hmm. I, I feel... Yeah. There's a lot of content. Uh, it's a lot of. A lot of tricks, a lot of ideas and content. Yeah, and business right. as well. And, yes. and marketing a little bit. And in theory on, on magic and what we should be well, doing I, on I'm, our shows. I'm, I'm, mostly, I'm, mostly, uh, I'm mostly speaking about the uh, creativity, the tricks, the ideas. I'm, I'm not a businessman. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. so, but if uh, audience would like to, to ask me about European markets, uh, because I'm performing a lot during the, the shows, what nowadays are organizing, are organizers of the festivals looking for in France and Spain yes. so yeah of course I can share but I feel it's uh, it's not so important when when once you will um, get uh, your your act your unique act and uh, yeah, when you will feel that you uh, well express yourself with this act so i'm sure you will mm -hmm. have success and everyone will contact you because i didn't do any marketing in myself oh. i'm i'm ha i'm happy about this you don't have an agent or anything well i have nowadays i have but uh, yeah. mostly everything you know happens people start connecting me contacting me i was going to say i recall when we were together last at the uh, Abbott's get together this mm -hmm. last year, and you had uh, won first prize there. And at the time, saying, "I don't have anything else planned." And so, if anybody's, you know, I'm going to be here for a little bit longer. If you've got something available for me or a bed where I can sleep, let me know. And I remember Matt King getting on the phone and some other people saying, "We can help you. We we got some ideas and send you to the Magic Castle and whatever else." I mean, yeah. it kind of was like a, all of a sudden, boom! Everybody wants to help you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because Matt King called to Jennifer, to his yeah. uh, wife, and he said like. I have a Russian guy from KGB. <laughs> Can you stay at our house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and now we became very friendly. So it's, yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, sometimes yeah, I was like in a kind of frustration. I don't know. So it's like the, I don't know where to go during uh, mm -hmm. Abbott. So I was thinking, okay, I need to stay somewhere where I can pay not a lot of for for the room sure, yeah, sure. yeah so it was like and then the universe gave me opportunity to go yeah somewhere you just never know yeah you, you never know i i'm somewhere i'm discovering this world because uh, i'm still on on my road so mm -hmm. still on my road because you you trust your destiny that it's going to happen you know, you, yeah that's that's right you have that's the dream right. and then try to follow that yeah that's right i, I want to circle back to something i meant to get into we touched on briefly you mentioned david ginn uh and some of the books that your dad had brought back then as well uh a couple of things we're recording this then right now at the winter carnival of magic and of course david ginn is here i guess you've had a chance to talk with him and say how you had read his books I, I already did it during at IBM when I saw oh, for yes. the first uh, time like uh, uh, David Ginn and I uh, What was that like for you of actually seeing that guy at that time Well it was uh, you know it's a huge history because I was a small guy who was sending huh? the letters to David Ginn I was typing these letters to for, him from yeah, Russia Yeah yeah, yeah. Huh? because my father as I told you my father write uh, like uh, a text yes. he gave me on a paper, and then yes. I just type in it on a computer. So that's the feeling. Yeah, that's a great feeling from the past. Yeah, when you was a kid, and you, now you saw this person in a life. <laughs> yeah, it's some. Yeah, I just introduce myself. Yeah. To David, and I say, yeah, I'm the guy who was sending you letters, <laughs> like uh, when my father write everything, and he said, ah, oh, Sergey. He, yeah. he knows my father's name, so he I was see. because they was in contact for many, many years. How so. great must that have been? Wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, another thing I wanted to know is because, of course, Dave, again, is a children's entertainer, what is the market like in Russia for birthday parties? Do they have magicians at birthday parties like we have over here? Well, I think nowadays, uh, like my parents, they, uh, they change the way of uh, because they mix and theater and the magic tricks and based on David Ginn repertoire at the first and there was I think the first magicians who start doing the magic for kids mm -hmm. 
and uh, for family shows. Nowadays there is some, but mostly they are performing for private events. So okay. there is no magic. This is the only one magic theater in Russian Federation, and it's uh, nowadays it's municipal magic theater. It starts from the private, like a business, mm-hmm. but then it starts supporting uh, as every theater in this country yes. by the government. So. But you're not going into someone's home or apartment and doing a birthday party for a well, child. Or yeah, well, yeah, there is magicians who is uh, who is doing this, okay. I'm sure, but not not so many magicians. Not like magicians. they do it here. Uh, yes, no, 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 totally no. Mm-hmm. Mostly magicians, young magicians, and they perform for corporate events. So, wow, okay. So, but not do they have so. trade shows and things, I guess, like that? Uh, no, no, it's not so... <laughs> not so Popular like trade okay. magicians, yeah, and no wedding magic, I guess. At weddings, no, yes, there is weddings, yeah. Wedding. Okay, but yeah, they have weddings, but they have magicians at weddings. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's okay. right. Yeah, close up and mm-hmm. uh, magicians, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, market market is uh, is big one, I think so, but not a lot of um, great magicians you can find mm-hmm. as in United States because United States and. Wow, I'm sometimes I'm surprised. I'm surprised <laughs> about the magic sports and and ca- magic castle, magic lounge in Chicago, in Nashville, uh, House of Cards, and I know that uh, Jeff Hobson now run also Marvin's Magic, Marvin's magic mm-hmm. and uh, something more. So smoke and mirrors. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and in every state, a lot of different type of magicians and Vegas, of course, right. and yeah. And a lot of great shows like uh, in New York. So, wow. No. Nothing like that. In- Nothing like that. Well, it's uh, in uh, Russia, it's con- concentrated magicians in Moscow, St. Petersburg. And mm-hmm. then it's a huge country. And in every city, which is one million, two million people, maybe if you will be lucky, if you will find one, two magicians. So there are no restaurant magicians, like going table to table in a bar or a restaurant performing like they do here? Uh, well... Maybe there is some okay. someone, but it's not a big thing over there. No, okay. no, no. I think this market it's not still start like running uh, like in United States. So it's really countries. still more of a theatrical magic as opposed to close up magic. In in general, most magicians who do magic in Russia do theater magic rather than close up sleight of hand. No, no, no. Oh, you got a mix of both. No, I think mix of both. Okay. Don't ha- not everyone have opportunity to go on the big stage, of mm-hmm. course. I see. It's more easy to take a deck of cards and exactly. coins and perform it somewhere right. in the party. So to go to the theatrical stage, you need to have a, a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. You need to attend theatrical academy or circus academy, for example, in Moscow, and then it will help you to go to the stage. Right. Yeah, and it, and it's difficult, and usually magicians never do it. So ne- they never take a classes of a dance, of pantomime, of mm-hmm. uh, I don't know stage movements. So, no. And uh, one last thing, I guess, carrying that on. What about schools? Do they have school assemblies? I mean, again, David Ginn's bread and butter is going around to schools and doing that. Do they have entertainers, including magicians, going into schools? Not, not. It's not often. It's okay. not often. I have experience when I start um, doing magic with my parents. I have a, uh, experience to go to the kindergartens yes. and perform magic for the kids. That's, okay. that's the way I also start doing <laughs> magic. And I feel it's a great, great experience because it's a five, six years old uh, uh-huh. boys and girls. And they love it. And they love it, but wow, it's so difficult to take their attention. <laughs> yes. If you're wrong, if you're not well connected with them, so they just, you lost this connection, and they're not interested in you in, uh, at, all. <laughs> in at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's so. like uh, whatever shiny thing is they're looking at. It's like, oh, they're looking at you, and then all of a sudden something's outside the window, then they kind of get distracted. Yeah, if easily. you're not interested anymore. <laughs> so it's, it's was, uh, it was a great experience for me uh, yeah. performing. Yeah. I would think then starting to learn more theater, it helps with children to try to keep their attention for a period of time. Because if you can keep the attention of children, you can keep the attention of adults then on stage then too, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. So are there other, uh, I know there are magic societies and clubs uh, in, in Russia. Do you belong to uh, some clubs? Do you associate with other magicians or do you pretty much keep to yourself? Well, uh, you know, I was... Um there is two magic clubs in Moscow and St. Petersburg, just two organizations. They're mm-hmm. not so huge. And, uh, well, in my way, I was 
mostly on my own all mm-hmm. my life doing something myself with mm-hmm. my parents and the right. theater so and i don't belong to any uh, organization but once i i've been there yeah and uh, well i remember the time when i arrived like young person who was really interested in the magic well but i feel not good atmosphere there really first time when i attend the kind they were of jealous or they what what, what was yeah, the atmosphere? Was, what do you mean yeah i mean i i yeah, I was maybe I was not so original at that time. Okay, so they didn't feel like you were part of them. Yeah, yeah. So, you were on the outside. Yeah, and I was um, try to go to the FISM China two thousand nine. Okay, and um, that time I feel like mm, so some of magicians was like, oh, and these guys go into the FISM, mm-hmm. uh-huh, like this, and I feel like wow, I, and then I was traveling to Poland to Lodz. Okay. And uh, one of the judges was uh, Lisa Menna. Yeah. And um, I totally feel so different atmosphere during the convention and magicians just, oh, Artyom, nice to meet you. Open, Today we are go. Yeah, yeah, welcome. That's the way Lisa is also. She's yeah, we are going to like uh, kind of take a drink, join us, yeah. and all the night we discuss. I was like, unbelievable. This is the way it should be. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's I would like to do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Lisa opened for me in a different, like telling me all about magic and give me. We are still big friends with yeah. Lisa after, like, I don't know, it's like after decade, I don't know how many years. It was mm-hmm. like 2000. You said 2008 or 2006, seven, something? Yes, like. but I was in Poland. It was more early. It's maybe it was 2003, something oh, like okay, this. Got so it. mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of time. We are still friends and we are yeah. in touch with her. Yeah. So yeah, that's and that's I feel. Oh, this is a great, this is a great community mm-hmm. yeah, because you know, even magic dealers uh, <laughs> <laughs> at that time um, in my country. It's if you if you like something, he, the dealer perform for you the magic trick, and you oh, it's interesting. Can I um, can I take the check the material just to yeah, feel touch it, touch yeah. it yeah, yeah, to understand. No, you can't. <laughs> you need to pay. <laughs> and then you you will get something. Yeah. You know? So and then I feel in Europe, oh, it's totally different. So I it's oh looks like it's a good quality. It's yeah. Here, what, take yeah, it. Look take at it. it. Yeah, yeah. And you can yeah, just palm it and feel so it's comfortable for you. Yeah. So totally different mentality. No, now it becomes better and better, of course. It's time changed and yes. uh, I'm sure but uh, it's it's still not developed like magic clubs like in uh, in United States, like in mm-hmm. United Kingdom. So it's I think it's still like mostly local. Yeah. Okay, and the locals are more closed. They're not too yeah. welcoming of letting other people in necessarily mm-hmm. in that group. Yeah, in some way, yeah. Some way, that's, yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, I know we have magic conventions around the world. As I just mentioned, we're obviously here at the Winter Carnival in Tennessee, and they have conventions across the United States and around the world. We talk about uh, not just FISM, but Blackpool and, and other kinds of things. Do they have any or many conventions in Russia? I mean, it's a huge country. It, with not a, a lot of magicians, as many certainly as we have here in the States, but do they have magic conventions like what we have in the States at all there? Just two conventions. Moscow and St. Petersburg. Two organizations, just two conventions okay. during the year. So it's not like you're going to, I don't know, Saratov and Sochi and Yekaterinburg and where is uh, like one million people city uh-huh. and should be a community of magicians. Should be. No, but huh. in these cities you can find one two, professional magicians yeah. who is a full time one two persons in a city of a million people yeah and wow. usually that's i always surprising coming to europe to united states there is a lot of magicians who have a regular job mm-hmm. but they're interested in the magic like a hobby like occasional so right. doing mm-hmm. something sure. yeah in uh, russia impossible i don't huh. know why b- depends on what kind of cultural moments but if you choose the way I'm doing magic as a profession, mm-hmm. you're doing this magic uh, as a professional, right? full time. I don't meet anyone who is doing magic like occasionally just for a hobby. A hobby. No, huh. no, I don't know. Maybe I don't know the reason why, how to answer in these questions. 
maybe magic is not so like a popular usually like kids go to the dance classes singing and something mm-hmm. but magic maybe people still feel that magic it's mm, it's kind of what is your profession i'm a magician but no what is your profession no yeah. i'm a magician yeah no how you get your money they can understand yeah that. they cannot understand still so this is not magic and art i think in the mind in the thoughts of the people in russia so it's still it's like pick a card it's something like a joke or mm-hmm. i don't know well in communism i understand everyone is supposed to be helping each other and you kind of pull up each other by, by helping and if you're a magician you're probably from what i hear you saying you're seen as being lower class and it's like you're not contributing enough to our welfare for the for the communal effort if you will and so you should be doing something else. You should be creating something. You should be building something. You should be a carpenter or, or a craftsman of some sort. Uh, just doing card tricks is, is not going to make enough money to kind of help float all of our boats. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, what about magic shops? Do they have any or many brick-and-mortar magic shops, or is everything purchased online? Well, uh, there, is, uh, there is two magic shops in Moscow. There is a magic shop in St. Petersburg, and uh, in Samara there is something small. Well... Um, but it's it's kind of uh, reselling of what we have uh, in um, in. Uh, it's kind of what resell. Reselling. I mean resale. 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 Yeah. Okay. Res- just resale. So they're not. Uh, it's not new stuff. It's stuff that someone else had had died, and so you've got their estate, or you're they're reselling something that someone else already owned. Ah well, maybe not. I'm not correcting. So okay. So. Uh, they have magic shops. Yes. They have magic shop. They're selling some stuff, but um, uh, mostly it's not um, depends on also. I think on the market that not everyone um, have opportunity to buy expensive tricks. Uh huh. Depends on their salaries. Depends on their sure. uh, yeah. So well, the it's, average. It's a lot. A lot of I think Chinese stuff coming from China. And it's so China. It's not so. It's close to Russia. And right. It's more easy to get this stuff from China. So mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. And so they have a lot of Chinese products. A lot of Chinese products. A okay. lot of it's Chinese uh, illusions. So yeah. Because a lot of times those Chinese products are things that came from American inventors and builders, and then the Chinese have knocked these off and sell them cheaper. And so they can sell them. I assume then to those shops in Russia where mm. people don't mm-hmm. have the same salaries there that they'd have in the United States to be able to afford that. And so, uh, but if they're not encouraging people to be a magician, then why would you want to do that then necessarily? So it's like, well, I keep hearing this, I guess, so I don't need to go to a magic shop to buy anything, you know, or to learn any magic. I shouldn't go any further. So I can see why it could be discouraging that you to, to not be a magician. In the United States, that's frequent. We would hear that too when people say, well, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a magician. Well, what do you do full time, you know, to, to pay for your bills? I mean, that's, that's not uncommon in the United States to hear a similar kind of uh, comment. So, uh, and oftentimes they miss here, say I'm a magician. They say, well, what instrument do you play? Because they think we're saying musician instead of magician. And so I always laugh at, I don't, I just smile and say, I play the cards. And they say, well, I don't understand. I say, well, I'm a magician. I play with playing cards oh a magician not a musician (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah so i was curious about kind of the pathway about how people get involved in magic and so it's just something but but they do have hobbies i mean whether it's fishing or golf i'm assuming other kinds of things but but magic's just not one of them huh no i never i in my life i never met someone uh, a hobbyist hobbyist, yeah with uh, magic so no so yeah people are interesting when you perform yeah, for them and yeah, mm-hmm. they're happy but it's not a um, yeah mo- mostly mostly young magicians i don't know the way so magic club maybe they attend but not so many i mm-hmm. don't see like a lot of many young magicians in these magic clubs mm-hmm. there is some but not too many Maybe they are on their own way, and nowadays uh, like YouTube and uh, online, so you can learn. Uh, because when I start, it didn't was, have that. 
well, I have a deal up modem and it takes me, you know, <laughs> this, up modem, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes me it takes me one hour to download oh the, uh, the the kind of acts from Cabaret du Monde from uh, Paris, uh, Patrick Sebastian show where okay. there was a lot of uh, magicians European appearing and then uh -huh. I saw magicians from United States. It was I was like at the theater at the evening time waiting when it's like downloaded. So mm -hmm. it was this is was my way to learn from all the or from TV programs if I was lucky if there is someone magician appearing on TV series like right uh, yeah because it was the world greatest magic uh, once uh, they tr um, they put it on Russian TV mm -hmm. and we was shocked to see all this uh, really uh, yeah magician so it was and I think it was many years after uh-huh so after it, it was yeah after in the united, it was states, in so united <laughs> states yeah so we was happy to to see this one so nowadays it's i feel it's more easy for magicians to go into their profession to learn to mm -hmm. get to get the information it's more easy nowadays in russia yeah yeah, yeah i mean mm -hmm. yeah for russian magicians mm -hmm. Um, because there's all the magic shops and you can go easily to buy because you know now it's a video it's everything yeah. when you buy something everything now is a download they don't come with a DVD they don't come with instructions it's yeah, just a, right. a link that you go to watch the video to learn how to do this trick now yeah that's right because during my time it was a cut 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 cat catalog so the catalog, you, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. you just open it and you start reading okay just picture and then it happens like this, and you imagine, <laughs> oh, I will be a super magician. <laughs> then it's arrived, and you feel, oh, there is some difference. Right. <laughs> so this, that's the way I, I learn, and uh, that's the way uh, I discover the magic and the way to, yeah. So it's, it's totally different than nowadays. Uh, so are are there a lot more younger people uh, coming into magic you see uh, in Russia? Well, depends. I think on the um, on the movies also, like oh, famous movie about magicians. Uh -huh. I think kind of wave and there is this uh, cardistry and it yes. looks amazing and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think a lot of young people like start interesting. Well, that's the thing in the United States also. I think there are fewer illusionists because the price of entry is more expensive to buy illusions, pay for your dancers and assistants and rehearsals, etc., as opposed to buying a deck of cards. So there are a lot more close-up magicians and younger people doing card tricks because the price of entry, again, is cheap. Uh, and they can be really good and then can grow from there to get involved in other kinds of things. So I would think it'd be the same thing then in Russia because now it's easier without a dial-up modem to be able to download and access not only YouTube, but also instructions and, uh, and some tricks to do with the deck of cards you just bought, you know? No, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. That's totally true that it's more easy to take this deck of cards, but it's not, I mean, it's not e more easy way. Hmm. Uh, it's not easy, boss, and with uh, big illusions, And uh, but for me, it's better to start if I will give any, uh, I don't like to give advices, but if I will give advice, to someone, it's better to start from manipulation. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, okay. it's, hmm. yeah, you just, I I met a lot of magicians who With is cards, like, billiard balls, or yeah, anything? Yeah, anything. Like, well, timbles nowadays is not uh, right. is not so popular, but I still, I will perform during my lecture and mm -hmm. with timbles in a different sequences. That I feel like it looks like more modern, it's right. interesting. And uh, I feel it's better to have your personal skills that doesn't matter where you're traveling. You open your case, you take a deck of cards and uh, right. four balls, and you can do like uh, 10 minutes and entertain the people. And mm -hmm. you don't need to bring illusions and pay the, all the uh, all the travel costs. Uh, I mean, it's I mean, it's great to to have the skills right and use them. And then, of course, if you want to play a stage illusion, okay, you can you can do it. Mm -hmm. But I, I met a lot of magicians who can do illusions, who can rotate illusions. Right. You know, but when you ask them to do something more... They have no manipulative skills. Yes, yeah, so that's for me weakness point. So you say you think the entry point for magicians should be in manipulation. I feel so. Okay. I feel so. How do they learn that? How would you jump into that? I mean, was it back palming a card or what do you recommend? How, well, do, how do you start? Where do you learn? Well, I learned from the classics. I learned from the classics, so... In yeah. books? 
Well, something in books. Once I, uh, my father introduced me to one uh, old magician in Saratov. He showed me like back palm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I start learning. Then uh, I have, um, well, uh, I received uh, my first, it was tapes. When my father arrived from United States. He bring me like Jeff McBride, DV, uh, mm -hmm. not DVD, but uh, old tapes. Mm -hmm. And I learned uh, a lot of like, classics from dvd from dvd from this yep. material video material so right. it was it's kind of more easy way so now i think it's a lot of but i prefer to give advice maybe to learn from koreans mm -hmm. it's uh, it's it's kind of i think it's nowadays it's a classic also yeah yeah but to be honestly in my act i'm 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 my card part for example i'm using just Two, two. I'm using still back palm uh -huh. and then kai palm, you know, and yeah, and yeah, and just shooting. the two palms, just two palms. Yeah, I, I know, I know a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I know a lot. I mm -hmm. can do a lot of different sequences. Right. Maybe I can do. But this is the most efficient for your act. Yeah, but this is the way I feel like. Oh, I need to use this in this way. I can manipulate with uh, standard bicycle cards, or mm -hmm. I can manipulate with, uh, for example, like um, for manipulation, like Norm Nelson cards. Right. Yeah. So I know all the way how to prepare the cards, how to fanning with both of them, mm -hmm. uh, which cards is best for for this effect, for this. So I know everything about manipulation, mm -hmm. and I learn a lot of from uh, discover from uh, Marco Tendo, from Shimada, from Juliana Chen. So every time something appears new in techniques in shooting, I try to learn it. Still these days, new appearing, so I try to learn. It's just, it's just interesting never stop for learning. me. No, never stop, never mm -hmm. stop. We mentioned Marco Tendo. I I worked with him at the Magic uh, Island in Houston many many years ago, and in watching him perform on stage, that was the first time I ever saw somebody manipulate jumbo cards. And I thought, first of all, how would you? I, I would never have thought about that. And the way he did it, it's like you can do that. And it was the most impressive thing to this day. I still remember him like it was last night doing that. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting that I start, uh, I have a video some, somewhere on my drive. So when I was performing with a huge cars also, mm -hmm. I have this experience. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's great. That's that's really visual for the stage. It's not practical for the corporate event or <laughs> different. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe so. not. Yeah. But there are other things. Well, as we yeah. start to wrap up over here, the name of my podcast is called The Magic Word Podcast. And I always yeah. like to ask my guests about what it is that's important in your life. What is it that's your magic word or phrase? What What, what, what is important for, yeah. for my life? I think audience. Audience for me is most important because mm. I'm I'm artist. I'm, I'm on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because of my ego, because I, I want to share what I'm doing, share with the people. With the to most make, people you can. Yeah, to share my energy, to give all I have during this five oh, minutes uh, to yeah. the people. So I feel if uh, during my performance we have this connection together and we share, the, or I send in my energy, they send in yes. back and we have this circle of energy, that's the most important for me. Yeah, that's the kind of a reason why I am going on stage. Not because I want to surprise you by the by the magic tricks. I'm not doing something like special on stage, mm -hmm. nothing special. So, but if we feel this connection, so it, it, for me it's a magic. It's magic. It's something behind the tricks. Right. Well, I like that. Yeah, magic is something behind the tricks, but also share the energy then with your audience, with the widest group possible. I, I heard John Armstrong say here with that uh, he stopped doing close-up magic because he was wowing one group, but then he had to reinvent himself for the next four people. You know, so he's going from four people to four people, or whatever. But by doing it in front of a larger audience, you get to wow a thousand people at one time. So it's important, as you say, then to share the energy with an audience, with whether it is an audience of one or an audience of a thousand. Yes, that, uh, but just share your passion and share your emotion. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's, that's right. great. That's and true. and have an audience. That's what magic is about. Otherwise, we're just fooling ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know? Artem Shukin, thank you very much. I appreciate you being my guest here this week. This thank is you. great. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> You're welcome. So, so for the Magic Word Podcast, all the way from Russia, there he is. That's Artem Shukin. This is Scotty Out. Thank you, Artem, very much for 
sharing your experiences on how that you got started in magic, and I found that fascinating. I hope you listeners uh, found that to be equally exciting and fascinating as I did as well. Quite some stories there, and congratulations then, Artem, for all that you have accomplished so far, and I know you are early in your career and you have a lot more to go from here. So keep it up, and I uh, look forward to hearing more about you and seeing you down the road as well. Well, one last thing I want to remind everybody then, and that is if you haven't signed up for the pod letter, be sure and do that so this way that you get weekly updates on what's coming up from time to time and also some suggestions from the archive. So when you go to the magicwordpodcast.com, there should be a little pop-up there that will tell you to subscribe to the pod letter. If not, there is a a tab that you can click on and you can get more information. Anyhow, I suggest you do that. And also, the best thing that would really help us if you could uh, leave some sort of a positive comment along with some five stars uh, for on iTunes uh, that about how much that you enjoyed the show, that will go a long way to help our podcast grow. We are growing and it's because that those reviews are helping us and we are becoming more known throughout the world and more magicians are tuning in all the time. And so thank you all who are listening, who are new listeners, and we welcome you, and I hope that you enjoy this, and also encourage you to go back into the archives. As I mentioned earlier, we have over 750 of these about back there, and so when you go to the Magic Word Podcast website, you will see an archive there that you can click on to uh, listen to some of the past episodes. So, until next week, stay well, get booked, and remember to make a connection with your audience, and share your passion. This is Scotty out. <laughs>